Hi, I am Dr. Sakim Mansoor from my channel Learning Anatomy. And uh, today I will discuss with you last video of my lecture on the series of the bones of the lower limb, which is the fibula bone. You, you could see this fibula. This, this is the articulated um, lower limb. And this is the hip, hip bone. This is sacrum. And this is the femur. This is the tibia, discus already, all bones, and this is the fibula lying on the lateral side, slender bone, and uh, corresponds to the ulna of the upper limb. And this is the articulated foot. Here you could see the subcutaneous areas of these two bones I've already discussed with the tibia. This is fibula. Here you could see this is a head stylite process and the subcutaneous lateral malleolus. You see again, slender shaft of the fibula, the lateral bone of the leg, is expanded above into a quadrilateral head and below into a flat malleolus. You see the labeled one. This is the head. This is expanded. And uh, below is the, you know, this malleolus. Here you could see this is the lateral malleolus, flat one. Triangular articular surface on the medial aspect of the lower end has a pit, the malleolar fossa behind it. Let's see the malleolar fossa. You could see this is the malleolar fossa. So see the aesthetic. And uh, here, here is, this is a fibula. This is the lateral malleolus. And here is lying the malleolar fossa of this bone, fibula. These features enable the right and the left fibulae to get distinguished. The fossa lies to the left in the left fibula and lies to the right in the right fibula, right? This is also important in the side determination, uh, this important malleolar fossa, right? The head has to be kept upside and this, um, you know, malleolar fossa below with the lateral malleolus in this position. So the upper end of the fibula, first of all, we'll describe of this long bone, the upper end. Head of the fibula bears an oval around facet that faces proximally and medially. It articulates with the reciprocal facet on the upper epiphysis of the tibia. Let's see that. You could see this is, you know, the our this head. Over this, you could see also over here. This is the head. And this is the stylar process. And this is the articular fissure for the inferior surface of the lateral condyle of the tibia. Here you could see this. And you see also over here, this is the articular fissure for the proximal head of fibula. So this, see the laser. And this, these quad, um, articulate with the in the inferior tibio in the superior tibio fibular joint formation like this so this is the opposite side and uh, this is a joint here made here palpable stylite process or also called the apex is projecting upwards from the posterior lateral part of the head the arcuate ligament of the knee joint gets attached to it so the one thing is the head and then the second thing is the stylite process. Stylite process is also called as the apex. This is palpable by the hand or the subcutaneous. Fibular collateral ligament and biceps tendon gets attached in front of the stylite process. Let's see the biceps tendon attaching to it. Here you could see this is the biceps femoris tendon getting attached to it, the stylite process. Neck of the fibula is a short bare area just below the head of the fibula. You see the neck. This is the neck of the fibula. You could see this. This is head above and this is narrow neck. This is neck. It's important thing to note. Common fibular nerve or the common peroneal nerve passes posterolateral to the neck of the fibula. 
I'll show you the picture of this nerve, um, how it attaches to this uh, uh, neck, how it is related to this neck. Uh, this is a fibular collateral ligament attachment to it. Shaft of the fibula. Shaft has three surfaces, anterior surface, lateral surface, and the posterior surface. And, and these correspond to the anterior corresponds to the extensor surface, the peroneal corresponds to the lateral, and flexor compartment corresponds to the posterior surface, respectively. Let's see that. This is the shaft. First of all, we'll see the borders. This is the anterior border over here, and this is the interosseous border. Two borders are visible. This is the lateral surface, and this is the medial part of the posterior surface, right? And uh, this is the anterior surface, and here this is the posterior surface. Lateral surface lies between the anterior and posterior borders and is smooth and distally spiral posteriorly and become continuous with the groove behind lateral malleolus, the lateral surface. This is the lateral surface. Here you could see this lying between the anterior and the posterior borders. Here you could see it more clearly. Perhaps this is a you know, lateral surface. This is the posterior border. This is the anterior border. This is the interosseous border of the fibula. And this is the medial surface. And this is the anterior border. And uh, this is the posterior surface. This is, uh, you know, the medial crest. I will uh, show you later on very soon. Peroneus brevis and longus. Peroneus brevis takes origin from lower two thirds of the lateral surface and is, and its tendon travels down to groove the back of the lateral malleolus. Let's see the peroneus brevis first of all. This is a picture showing overall attachment on the anterior aspects of the fibula as well as tibia, and this is on the posterior aspect. So I was talking about the fibularis. Longus and brevis, right? So this is the peroneus brevis, and here it is attached to this point. And you see as well here as well, this is the peroneus longus, or fibularis longus muscle. Peroneus longus takes origin from upper two thirds behind brevis where they get overlapped and its tendon travels down behind tendon of the peroneus brevis. So let me enlarge these two for you. For the purpose of the clarity, this is above the peroneus longus muscle. And as we come down, this is the peroneus brevis muscle, smaller than the longer ones. And this is the groove for the tendon of tibialis posterior on the tibia already discussed in the video. And to uh, right now, I'm talking about the tendon and, and the groove for uh, fibularis longus and fibularis brevis muscle. Here it lies in the back of the uh, this uh, fibula. Now, let's see the very important, the common peroneal nerve makes entry into peroneus longus in the neck of, at the neck of the fibula, the part of shaft adjoining head. Let's see the common peroneal nerve. You could see this is the common peroneal nerve and its relation to the neck of the fibula. Let me enlarge it for you for interest and clarity purpose, the crystal clear concept. This is the common peroneal, peroneal or common fibular nerve, right? And this as well here, common peroneal, the common fibular nerve. And see its branches over here. Deep peroneal nerve and the superficial peroneal nerve. Nerve can be rolled against bone here where it can be damaged by a tight bandaging or plaster cast. It divides here into superficial and deep branches. Shown you already superficial and deep branches of the common peroneal nerve. Superficial peroneal nerve travels down within peroneus longus and brevis, while deep peroneal nerve pierces the anterior intermuscular septum to reach the extensor compartment of the leg. 
In lateral compartment, these two nerves, though very close to the fibula, are not in real contact with it, right? They are not in contact with it and are cushioned by many deep fibers of the pronius longus. Ridges that border of the uh, that ridges that border the lateral surface uh, that provide attachment to anterior and posterior septa that enclose peroneus muscles. Shaft continues. Shaft of the fibula above malleolar articular facet is a rather a rough triangular surface for intrusious tibiofibular ligament. From apex of this triangular area, a short ridge goes upwards and divides into posterior one is intrusious, but it divides into two. Posterior one is intrusious border and the other is anterior border. So let's see intrusious tibiofibular ligament. This I told you already, this is anterior border. This is the medial crest. Here you could see this is intrusious tibiofibular ligament attachment on the fibula. This is lower end of the fibula, right? This is the lower end and this is the intrusious tibiofibular ligament. In this picture as well, intrusious tibiofibular ligament from the uh, fibula to uh, this uh, tibia. Anterior surface lies, uh, anterior surface with shaft lies between these borders, intrusious border and anterior border. I told you already that uh, anterior surface is here, it lies between th these two borders and you can see from here as well that uh, this uh, anterior surface lies between these two borders. It is exceedingly narrow, particularly at its upper end where it, some fibulae, anterior and intrusious borders get fused. From upper three quarters of this narrow part of the bone, extensor digitorum longus arises and at this point, deep peroneal nerve touches fibula beneath the muscle. It's important. So extensor digitorum longus. Let's see that. This is the extensor digitorum longus origin, right here. Being continuous with this muscle, peroneus tertius takes origin from lower third of the anterior surface. Let's see the peroneus tertius as well. Here you could see this is the peroneus tertius muscle. Here is the small muscle, the peroneus tertius. Lying deep to this, that is towards intrusious border extensor, hallucis longus takes origin from middle third middle half of the fibula and adjacent intrusious membrane. This is the extensor hallucis longus. You see that? If you want to zoom, think it's better always to zoom for clarity purpose, the crystal clear concepts. Extensor digitorum longus. Here you could see this. And this is extensor hallucis longus. Posterior surface lies between the intrusious and posterior borders and it's quite wider. Middle third of this surface bears a vertical ridge, the medial crest. I've shown you already this medial crest. You can see here, this is the medial crest of the fibula, the posterior surface. Middle third of this surface, uh, which travel, the medial crest travels down towards intrusious border. It divides this part of the posterior surface into lateral and medial parts. To the medial part, between the medial crest and the intrusious border, tibialis posterior gets attached. So let's see the tibialis posterior. Here you could see this is the uh, wider attachment of the tibialis posterior. Here it is attached to the, you know, our uh, fibula, the intrusious membrane and the tibia. Lateral part of the posterior surface between posterior border and the medial crest is for attachment of the flexor hallucis longus. Here you could see this is the flexor hallucis longus attachment. Here you could see the lateral part. Below medial crest, that is below tibialis posterior origin, flexor hallucis longus continues to take origin from the whole of the posterior surface 
and from intracious membrane as far as far as inferior tibiofibular joint flexor hallucis longus i told you already this is flexor hallucis longus going down here a spiral twist of posterior surface matches spiral twist of the lateral surface upper part of the flexor surface varying from a quarter to one third provides origin to the soleus a roughened soleal line is present on many bones. Soleus, very important, big muscle. You could see this, but it's attachment. Here, this is the soleus attachment. Here, from the back of the, this is the back of the head, neck, and going down. Here, this, this is soleus, and this is soleus also as well, continuing to the, Tibia as well. I told you already in my tibia lecture. So now the lower end of the fibula. Lateral malleolus projects more distally than medial. That is very important. It projects more distally. Maybe 0.5 centimeter or like that. So from the tibial malleolus and its anterior surface is 1.5 centimeter posterior to that of the medial malleolus. Very important relation these two. It's uh, occasionally, rather frequently, MCQs are formed uh, from these bones of the polym, this point, lateral malleolus and medial malleolus of the tibiofibular relations. Its medial surface possesses a triangular articular surface for talus. Malleolar fossa behind this surface gets perforated by many foramina. So I've told you already this malleolar fossa as well. You see again on this bone, this is the malleolar fossa here. Follow the laser. This is labeled malleolar fossa. It provides attachment to two ligaments that diverge to tibia and talus. First of all is the posterior tibiofibular ligament and then is the posterior talofibular ligament. Here you could see this is the posterior tibiofibular ligament over here. And over here, this is the posterior talofibular ligament. These are the two ligaments attached here. Lateral triangular subcutaneous area bears the rounded lower margin with a smooth area in front of the anterior talofibular ligament and a much similar area immediately in front of the apex for calcaneofibular ligament. So here you could see this is the um, calcaneofibular ligament. And uh, he, yes, here it is. This is calcaneofibular ligament, right? This is calcaneofibular ligament. This is, yes, I'll talk to you anterior talofibular ligament. And uh, this is calcaneofibular ligament. Between the subcutaneous area and malleolar fossa, there is a smooth groove on back of the malleolus for the tendon of peroneus brevis. I'll talk to you, um, uh, you see again that uh, this is the groove for the uh, fibularis longus and brevis. Uh, this is also the peroneus longus and uh, brevis, other name. Here, this is a groove. Both tendons lie here. Superior peroneal retinaculum travels from the tip of the malleolus to the calcaneus. Now, surgical approach. Fibula may be exposed from lateral size along with the interval between the peroneus longus and the soleus using common peroneal nerve as a, at the parent as a guide to the interval. In the last ossification, it's very interesting that uh, um, uh, the fibula does not obey the law of ossification, right? Fibula ossifies in cartilage by a center lying in the shaft that appears in the eighth week. There is lying an epiphysis at each extremity. Head, the growing end is exceptional in ossifying later, fourth year, than the lower end, the second year. The upper epiphysis gets fused with shaft by 20 years, the lower one before it is about 18 years, right? So this is against the law of ossification. So thank you very much for watching my video. And this ends my lectures on the, you know, bones of the lower limb. So do subscribe my channel for more interesting videos. 
and do support me by subscribing my channel thank you very much take good care of you goodbye